The Faculty is a movie I tried to do a video on a while ago and I just couldn't find the words to really express what I love about this film and what I think makes it so great and adored by audiences. But this time round, I think I got it. But to start, people identify this film as varying different things and I think that's important. Some people view it as an Elijah Wood film or any part of the cast film. Some people view it as an Invasion of the Body Snatchers derivative. Some see it as a mostly Robert Rodriguez film. Some others identify it as a late 90s teen horror. But me personally, I see it as one thing above all, which is what drew it to me in the first place. And that's the fact it's a Kevin Williamson film. Scream is a movie and franchise that means a great deal to me and a large part of that is Kevin Williamson's writing. The movie was so revolutionary and inspired that it influenced almost every teen horror that came after it to the point where it's still influencing movies to this day. Now obviously that's because as a production Scream is incredible but a huge factor of it is of course Williamson's writing. And as a writer, he has a style. It's very self-referential and playful, and in a word, it's meta. Scream and the subsequent movies were a meta commentary on slashers and their franchises. I Know What You Did Last Summer was essentially the same thing. Cursed is a meta commentary on werewolves and universal monster flicks in general. Sick was a meta commentary on COVID and also home invasion movies, and the same thing applies to The Faculty, which is a meta commentary on body snatchers and alien invasion subgenres. And we'll go more into the screenwriting aspect specifically as we go along, but beyond the script, let's just talk about what's actually on screen. Which starts off with, of course, the cast. So the cast of this film is unusually stacked for a late 90s teen horror. Not only do we have the likes of Claire Duvall who went on to do Girl Interrupted and But I'm a Cheerleader, we have Josh Hartnett who went on to do Black Hawk Down, 30 Days of Night and biggest of all Oppenheimer last year. Elijah Wood who shortly after went on to feature in the widely adored Lord of the Rings. There's Jordana Brewster who famously played Mia in the Fast and Furious saga which we know I adore. Fam Ke Janssen, who has done many great films but most famously plays Jean Grey in the original X-Men trilogy, Jon Stewart who's now a Daily Show host, B.B. Norworth from Frasier, Piper Laurie from Carrie and Twin Peaks fame, Christopher McDonald from like everything, Salma Hayek from basically everything, we have the T-1000 and of course Usher Raymond. That's right, Mr. Confessions is here and the movie is damn proud of it. He's like the second guy you see despite his role being so minimal, you could forget he's even here. They even stick him on the front of the poster. Now, I'm not sure if Usher wanted to be an actor or something back then, but for what little he's given, he does okay. And to accompany this cast compiled of upcoming stars and established legends, we have these goofy name cards that are so 90s, and this charm is what attracts people to this. Especially when adding the cast that went on to do many varied things so people from all over the spectrum get attached to this for different actors. Then on top of these crew aspects, the film itself is truly special and there's plenty of things that make it that way but the one thing I think this film excels at more than almost anything is explaining the human condition, the ideas of good and evil, the ideas of societal hierarchy, the ideas of individuality and earning who you are and not what society tells you you should be. This starts at the very beginning where the coach is infected and is chasing down Principal Drake in full T-1000 mode. At the beginning of this scene, he sticks a pencil through her hand and expresses that, I've always wanted to do that. And then this sentence is expressed a few more times during the movie by different people. At first it's through the coach and we see him during the opening and he seems like a volatile guy, angry and mean, so his character says this and that generates this grey area because you don't know whether whatever is infecting him is saying it through him or if this is his subconscious coming to light with genuine thoughts he can now act on without conscious restraint. But then through every repeat of this line it becomes a apparent that this isn't the parasite, this is just the human condition. People have these dark thoughts and we have to actively not act on them. Like how many times have you guys been driving and thought about how easy it would be to just simply swerve and crash? You don't do it but the initial thought is there. But does that make you evil? 
I don't think so, because the film hints that tiny little question but also through our characters we answer it. Say for instance Zeke, who is in my opinion the most interesting character in this movie. Zeke sells drugs, bootleg VHS tapes, pills, condoms, you name it, he's selling it. He's also redoing his senior year, people think he's an idiot and yet he's actually a part time genius. We get hints of that in this scene in English where he answers a question partly joking, being a class clown but in between his jokes he answers the question strangely profoundly. It's a moment where you think there's more to the character than what he's portraying himself to be. It's the same thing where Professor Furlong is explaining the parasite that Casey found and he says it's pelagic and Zeke offhandedly defines it as a sea dwelling organism for the class when they don't know what that means. Again, it's like a lackadaisical genius, nothing overly explicit or in your face. The best way they express this is through the drug that Zeke manufactures, nicknamed Scat. He steals equipment from school and has created his own drug, which in the end is a litmus test for who's been taken over and who hasn't. He's a guy who reflects society's worst when he easily could reflect the opposite. He's rebelling, but even in his rebellion, he can't help but hide his light, deny his destiny. He's hiding who he is, but his experience in this film makes him more confident, more outwardly intelligent. He becomes who he is. And then there's Stan who's a jock, he's captain of the football team but he wants to be smarter, he wants to try harder, he isn't denying his destiny, he just simply wants to improve. There's this little moment where he's explaining to Stokely that because of his position in the team, because this is a football town, despite getting a D on a test, his teacher bumped it to an A. But the reality is he didn't want the A, he didn't want perfect because perfect wasn't him, he wanted what he earned, even if it was barely passing. Stokely herself is pretending to be this rebel against society, there's even rumours of her being a lesbian which aren't true yet she refuses to dispute them because she's okay with letting society mould her into who they want her to be, even if it isn't who she wants to be. And this is a quality basically every character shares in some fashion, they're all playing different parts in a varied group that are all struggling with identity and societal pressure. This is a huge part of the movie because the infected are portraying perfect members of society, whether it be the kind hearted teachers or participating students. The coach doesn't even give Stan any trouble or discouraging words when he drops from the team, which firstly we know is out of character for this person, but secondly he says what kind of human being would he be if he did trouble Stan for leaving the team to excel in other areas. He's a perfect person in the scene, a perfect guardian, a perfect teacher, but he isn't really real. It's effective how they make the villains of the movie perfect humans, no fear, no selfishness, no imperfections and those things are what make us human to begin with, what make us interesting and beautiful. Think of the queen of the alien species, Mary Beth. She's a twist villain but in reality all the pieces were there to begin with. She's a perfect person who's just better at hiding it than the others. She's kind, sweet, innocent, loving, beautiful and a great friend. She's the only one of the six main characters who isn't going through an identity crisis of some sort. It should be obvious there's something wrong, but the film throws so many things at you at identifying these parasites that the big obvious perfect being hint doesn't hit you. She even says in her second interaction ever that she feels like an alien that day herself, which is so Kevin Williamson. And people love these creatures, and I think this is because not only are they great allegories for society and anti-individuality, but on the surface, they're just so cool. I love I love the way they're introduced, there's this ominous shadowy figure then immediately we show the coach attacking the principal and choosing to have Robert Patrick for this role is genius because not only is he perfect for this deceptively evil alien, but because of his history as the T-1000 which was so huge in pop culture we have this immediate distrust of him anyway. It's like triggering when we see him and the way they use water to indicate the infected is super fun, first of all the coach before he gets infected is stopping the water leaking out which is a minor thing but shows us basically the opposite of what he'd be doing later. Which is drinking an excessive amount of it, absorbing it, standing in the sprinklers and I love how they use the water as a way to show us how many people are being infected. The other faculty bring it up first comedically which is a subtle and natural way to once again tell the audience something without having to spoon feed it to you. Then later on we see the parasite
site that Casey finds, and we see that water agitates it. They're aquatic and they can multiply. They even imitate Stokely's hand. It's just beautiful storytelling through visuals rather than exposition. This classroom even has loads of nerves and bodies in them. It just trusts the audience to understand what they're being shown and to connect the dots themselves. Also, I love this little moment where Furlong gets bit and the camera quickly cuts to Mary Beth and then back. It shows she's not concerned like everyone else seems to be. Again, just a little hint of who she is. Then later on, we see loads of trucks and whatnot in the background, deliveries of water because more and more people are being infected. And this makes perfect sense as to why the aliens came to this planet. It's a world that's 71% water that's dominated by a species that's made up of roughly 60% water. And we judge the rate of infection that's solely happening off screen by the water we're seeing being delivered in the background and how many perfect beings we see that clearly stand out. And the water thing is what makes Zeke's drugs the perfect antibody for these parasites because it's mostly crushed caffeine pills which have diuretic properties which reduces fluids. It's just smart writing. And then beyond all of these fun little details, we get more little fun details littered throughout the movie like how we treat teachers and the education system. It's underfunded and we see teachers struggling for their department when the sports teams get all the money. The nurse even says at one point whilst ill that she's saving her sick days for when she's better, which I think is something a lot of people can relate to when they're working crappy paid jobs. And these characters are intelligent, like the principal who drops her keys to escape the school. Normally this would be through stupidity, but it's only the case here because she had to use them as a weapon and lost them in the struggle. These aren't the typical idiotic horror protagonists, and there's a fun thread where the infected coach constantly mentions Casey's speed saying he wants him for their team, there's plenty of chasing. But he's clearly talking about the alien species and not the actual team. When Zeke is selling some VHSs to some customers, he mentions this particular one that has Nev Campbell and Jennifer Love Hewitt in it with full frontal nudity. Both of these actresses being the leads in Kevin Williamson's last two written hits, Scream and I Know What You Did Last Summer. And to circle back to Williamson, there's plenty of his isms in this script. Loads of horror references and homages is like the thing with this spider head or the general who's infected storyline. The scene in which Casey and Delilah hide from the faculty members sort of mirrors Laurie Strode in the closet hiding from Michael Myers in the first Halloween. And there's a million mentions of Invasion of the Body Snatchers which is clearly a point of reference for this movie and I'm glad the film acknowledges that so much. But also it acknowledges that Body Snatchers as a novel was also a ripoff. So this film is a ripoff of a film that was an adaptation of a book that was a ripoff of another book. And still, through the elements we already spoke about, it stays fresh, it's new and unique. There's gorgeous effects, practical and not, and it's an updated take on this type of story. I also love that the villains aren't just simply aliens and that's why they're dangerous. They're specifically taking over teachers, the faculty. It's clever because these kids don't just have to overcome this great alien species, but their biggest obstacle is the fact that they're kids and the infected are adults. There's a social hierarchy and the reason our group don't use the police or anyone else is because we're shown it doesn't work. It's like the Order of the Phoenix where Umbridge is the greatest foe so far because she has political power. And the heroes are just a bunch of kids. A lot of times in movies we ask the screen why the characters aren't going to their parents or the police or whatever and this film goes out of its way to say that those things won't save you here. Also the fact the parasites are using schools to infect the earth is incredibly smart because of the access it provides to the most people in such short time and the takeover is quick, it stresses urgency. And there's just a whole lot going on that is more nuanced than this video can do justice. This film at the end of the day is a film about being real, being you. When society starts to seem perfect, we know it's broken. Everyone wants everything to be real, even if it's not as great. In the very end, Mary Beth as the Queen offers Casey the world, offers him a version of himself that he couldn't ever attain in a humanly possible way, and his simple reply is, I'd rather be afraid which I think sums up this movie more perfectly than anything I've said in this entire video. It's a story of overcoming societal standards, becoming who you always were, and knowing that being you is better than being who they want you to be. But that's just me. Have you seen The Faculty? If so, let me know what you think of it. Let me know what you think of this video, and whether it's one about the cruciality of individuality or not, 
As always, keep watching movies.